refers to the shape of, uh, of the bacon and uh, it's meant to look like the, the ear of a corn, uh, of, a, of a wheat stalk, the top of it, right? And uh, you start off with just a long piece like that, a little tape at any ends. And we take some scissors at the end, just before baking, once they're proofed, and we cut them, and I'll show you that. Looking for a nice, full proof, the pan filled out, uh, pretty much double in size. And all we do is let them go in the oven and uh, moderate, moderate oven, 12 to 15 minutes, uh, or however long that takes. Always a little tricky with these things to know when they're done. What you want to look for is, uh, you look for the lightest spot on the, in that dish. It's usually somewhere in the middle here. And you press on it. Uh, and if you feel a texture in there like a sponge, uh, you push this back, it's cooked. Take it out. If it isn't, if you push in and there's no resistance, you know it's still raw. So give it a few more minutes. Same happens actually to see if the things are proofed. We haven't talked about that yet, which is a kind of crucial thing. Again, how do you know when things are proofed? For most part, uh, pushing down onto the bake good here on, on, the, on a dough, and it springs back just about all the way out. Three quarters of the way out, it springs back out, you're good. If it comes all the way out, you're underproofed. If you push in and the indent stays in, uh, you've gone too far, too far, right? So throughout the process, go and poke the stump and uh, wait for that three-quarter return. It's good. It's good. And because you, you don't want it to go all the way. You don't want to go to the point where it's so proofed, but you can, but then then don't come out. No, of course you don't speak thing happening then. Because once it goes in the oven, it's still going to expand more, but it'll collapse again cannot maintain its, its gluten structure cannot maintain itself there. So don't overproof things. One third, 25% to 30% of the proof, or the volume I should say, final volume we bake it comes when you go in the oven later. And sometimes you see it rise even more than that and then collapse again. When you see that happening, you know you were overproofed. When you see it rise, 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 and stay there, you got it right on time. So we're gonna go in with the... Uh, so we have room uh, for two trays on either side of the little one there. And then six more. Oh. These guys too here are done. Same thing here. Now I took, uh, put them in the fridge about 10 minutes ago because they were kind of old proof by the time. So I put them in the fridge to stop this a little bit. Uh, but the same thing here, you do the same poke test, you know, comes up pretty much three quarters or almost all the way, you're done. Um, now we're gonna finish these up. Leg wash here, just whole egg, beaten up, a little salt, a little sugar in it, that's what makes them so nice and orange. And get them into a nice egg wash here. Look, eyes are falling out of here, don't wanna make this guy blind. Back in. And egg washing is done like you paint your house, yeah? No drips, no runs. Bottles. A couple of these with a wash and a couple with flour. My rat. There. Now, if you do cut buns, like especially decorative ones, the turtle or, or the, the mouse there, um, it is actually a good idea if you can to take the bun, if the tray is small enough, to go in the fridge for a little bit. Or if it's wind, to go outside for a bit. Five minutes. Just to set the dough up a little bit, makes it a little easier to cut. If you can. And then, cut a bit of a crisscross here for his turtle shell. <laughs> There. Uh, the bunnies, uh, we, I think we just gotta cut them out here. There. Okay, that's all that. There. The mouse here, gotta cut some ears. You know, from behind with scissors. There. They're gonna really pop up. Mm -hmm. 
And the AP roll that I was talking about earlier. Sorry. Um, so we would have done that with the multi grain dough, but I switched it out with our hot cross bun. So the AP, big scissors, cut them on an angle like this, very flat, mm -hmm. and separate this out. So that then, when it's baked, looks like the top of a wheat stock. And I have some with flour and some with egg wash so that just have a different final look to them, yeah? Don't want to cut them down too far or else they break apart. But uh, the idea of this is it's a, it's a family uh, style bread. It just sits on the middle of the table and everybody just breaks pieces off. Kind of the idea of this. Um, these guys here. Whole bun, like, gonna leave one whole, and the other one, I'm just gonna put a uh, crisscross cut into this, yeah, just for fun. Uh, I got some sesame and poppy seeds here, if that's something you like to do for the seeds. <coughs> these guys, so it looks nice. Put a little poppy on these guys here. You know, be creative, right? The fun is, I'll leave as is. And off they go in the oven. Back there to go around and uh, do that. Let's see where we are with our buns. 